Hey everybody, welcome to Monday. Yes, extra makeup, because I was doing boss fight stuff before I made this video. I usually shoot these videos before boss fight, but this was a week, and uh, maybe more on that at the end, including a boss fight update. We'll see how long this takes, because this is going to be some facts this time, because I have evidence, and when I have evidence, I present evidence. When it's just my opinion, I'll usually let it go, unless I'm really angry, angry, angry about something. But usually I keep my powder dry unless there's actually facts. So if you like facts, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. So the fans of Anita Sarkeesian already hate my guts. They take every opportunity to just personally trash me and make me out to be Satan. They're going to get plenty of fodder in this video because we're going to talk about the tweet that got a bunch of people mad over the weekend. Now, here's the tweet. Don't take my word for it. We're just going to go totally like, here we go. Okay. Lady, Lady Mandalorians with an apostrophe have boob armor. Oh, come on. Seriously. I'll give her credit for the correct Canadian slash British spelling of armor. That, that makes me inclined to be more sympathetic. And she clearly wrote this quickly because of the apostrophe S. But, oh, come on, seriously, question. But, okay, drink in the picture of the Lady Mandalorians. If you haven't seen this episode, don't worry about it. There won't be any spoilers, okay? This is just, this is just the picture. If you need help knowing who the Lady Mandalorians are. They are the one on the far left, the shortest one, and the one in the middle. Um, that is Katie Sackoff reprising her, her voice acted role from Star Wars Rebels. She actually gets to do the part on screen, which everybody went, okay, cool. But um, it, you know, at first I wasn't sure when I saw it in the episode whether, uh, what's the character's name, Bo? Uh, Bo Katan, uh, whether whether that was in fact female, the one on the side, I was like, whoa, why is the Mandalorian hot? Um, they they do make the pants a little different. I I will be straight up. I'm gonna give them the fact that the pants are different. Now, that's necessary. One of the big problems, like I said, facts. One of the big problems with Star Wars armor. And, and women cosplaying Star Wars armor, is that there is that problem. There's the problem in the proportions of the Stormtrooper suit. I wore one as a modeling gig, and I couldn't sit down to, to go to the bathroom. It's just not shaped for women's bodies. It's all for men's forms. So they have adapted the trousers, and it looks like they've adapted the belts just to sit, see, sit on female bodies different. Now, every... Every piece, every set of Mandalorian armor is different. No two are the same. So there's nothing wrong with there being some variations. You will notice that um, the, the central character is not the same as the character on the left either. And they're both women, I assume. They never declared, I am a woman. I just think we're allowed to assume that because she's calling them Lady Mandalorians. Apostrophe. Um, but... There's a few things I find strange about this, okay? One is that this is something she would be upset about at all in a universe where your mind feels can manipulate objects, okay? But let's give her benefit of the doubt she just really likes Star Wars, okay? A few problems remain. Um, this is not the first time we have depicted a female Mandalorian. There has been a female Mandalorian in The Mandalorian before this, the Armorer from season one. Now, she may have missed the fact that this character has a tapered waist, but I will reset the photo so I can show you. She does, in fact, have a tapered waist. Now, the breastplate does not come down as low as, am I going to throw this off here? Yeah, it, it doesn't come down as low as as the Merc armor, you see. So the the making space for the boobage 
is not as obvious, but it's definitely there. You can see a gap there. So that's the first thing that I'm perplexed by with the boob armor seriously. Um, but we also have Cara Dune from the series who is awesome. I'm not going to just fangirl um, Gina Carano in this role right now because she's amazing. I'm just going to show she's got tapered armor as well. And her armor isn't even supposed to be like metal magic. I mean, she's super muscular. And even then, you can, I don't know if you can see on your screen, but you can see the seams and the darts that they put into the costume to make room for breasts. And this is not strange to anybody that's worn armor. But apparently, this, this causes great offense because the idea of boob armor, as she has called it, which is kind of pejorative to women who actually have to wear body armor, because, hate to break it to you, many forms of armor are scaled differently. I'll get that I'll get into that in a minute with visual aids. But the, first of all, from a technical standpoint, for some people, like, what's the issue here with traditional like plate mail armor especially cavalry armor cavalry cavalry armor is traditionally built out because if you are getting hit with a mace or a lance or any weapon that is designed to just impact like blunt force instead of deflecting a weapon um you don't want a a concave area in the middle of your chest because that creates a crush weakness in the armor so when it collapses if it gets hit with something heavy it collapses here and it breaks your sternum it basically breaks your rib cage it bad okay that's not something you want but we don't have that in this armor the armor goes straight across with the little indentation that the man has too. The man, the male Mandalorian armor actually has, let me show you, more of an indentation in the center of his breastplate than the women do. Now, this armor in the show is designed to mostly stop laser blasters, like blaster fire, pew, 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 pew right? So we don't necessarily have to worry about that crush. It's also a strap on plate as opposed to something that kind of encases you like a tin can. So there's less of a risk of that, though it is still there. If you got really hard, you still don't want your your um, basically space ninja wizard bulletproof vest to, again, break your sternum. But again... The guy has a deeper groove in his armor than women do. There's nothing wrong with a uh, b basically allowing for curvature. And that's where I said I have visual aids. I pulled out my LARP armor. And the reason this is relevant is I deliberately said I want this to be as accurate fantasy armor as it possibly can be. Meaning I don't want the problematic like Valkyrie chainmail bikini boob armor. I actually want something that will not cause me to have welts if I get hit by one of the magic missile packs or a, a LARP weapon, a boffer weapon, because even though those have um, foam on the outside, if those things hit you hard enough, they still sting like a motherfucker if the core actually sort of whips at you. It stings, okay? And look at how the armor is made okay notice there's the exact same there's the exact same curvature as our lady mandalorians do you see how it kind of just cups under the boobs see how okay there's a very good reason for this because if you don't have that curvature your boobs are squished down and they start sweating in really uncomfortable places and crushing your breast tissue that way it isn't good for your breasts it isn't good for your lymph nodes it isn't good for any of the anatomy that's in that area 
And that's why properly made armor, it doesn't necessarily separate. Look, it's straight across that way. But it does have a curve in the front. Because it has to. Because otherwise the sweater meat just becomes sweaty meat because it has nowhere to go. Wearing male armor, which I did before I got this made, because, you know, I got the cheapy shit that was just out of vacuum form plastic. It's not only does it, like, it squishes until you can't squish anymore, but then it just pops out at the bottom. And what happens with armor that doesn't fit properly, that isn't made for your body, is it rubs. And it actually causes, I, I actually have a, a couple of very light scars here from bracer burns from this set, the matching bracers. But you want armor to fit your body so it's not sliding around and causing welts in very uncomfortable places. Do you want welts on your breasts? I don't. That would hurt a lot, which is why armor is made like this. Now, again, there is no groove. There is there is basically no cleavage on the armor, right? Because that would be bad. That would, you, you can get it, right? Like it closes in the back. So the stress point here is in the back, right? Imagine if there was a seam in the front that caused the whole thing to be able to just sort of bend like a door hinge. That's what you don't want. We don't have that in the Mandalorian armor. It's not a problem. This isn't boob armor. This is just armor that fits women. That's okay. Women are allowed to visually be women on screen. The whole point was a girl power moment of, oh, wow, cool, female Mandalorians. The character's actually pretty important in Star Wars lore and, and ties in directly to, to a particular thing in this show. So it's not just that she's a woman, it's that the character herself overall is quite relevant. And this is what I say, like, okay, people are going to get mad at me for this. The right people are getting mad at me for this because this crap has got to stop. It can't be open season on any female character, any female character design that looks remotely, you know, like a traditionally female form. Now, people are not less female if they have smaller boobs. It's more practical to have smaller boobs. I mean, Katie Sackhoff isn't gigantic, right? The other lady was pretty hot, but I, I suspect there was some, maybe some enhancements going on there because they padded the hips as well, I noticed in the costumes, just to make it to make it more conventionally flattering, right? Like, don't take my word for it. Look, see, the guy doesn't, he's got the, the um, deflection plates on the front, which makes it look more like muscle. They've got them on the sides to more, more like curves. That is an aesthetic choice. It is. But that's more of a, why don't they have protection in the front, damn it, than the armor that just kind of fits their bodies. It's not exactly practical to begin with because if you look at where the breastplate stops, all the viscera is exposed all those squishy bits you kind of and they, they do have something extending but the main part and i don't know maybe it has some ninja wizard space magic special thing that that like draw the blaster fire onto that so it doesn't hit you in the squishy bits but you know if we think about this too hard if we want to be super critical the curvature of the chest is not the most notable place to start point made point made all right so if you like this help support this channel become a monthly patron patreon.com slash liana k thanks for watching if you don't want to continue boss fight episode now yay update okay so um i managed to get the studio bits done over the weekend hence the makeup and managed to do some green sp screen pickups on a couple other characters there are two main characters left to shoot the pony dance, and then editing. So I am still on track. 
Um, that's about all. I It hasn't changed my... My very likely will not be done until December. Right now, I think most likely December 1st. Uh, so not December 1st. First week of December is what I'm aiming for right now. Might be second. But that's sort of where, I, where I'm aiming, where I think it is reasonable to get this done by, is landing right now. So, and uh, yeah, I would have gotten more done this weekend. I was planning on shooting two days this weekend instead of just the one. But I went to the mall on Friday to, uh, my mother's birthday is right before Christmas. And I so I went to the mall to get her present and tried to do a bit of Christmas shopping before it got really busy because COVID, right? But um, malls murder me with all the smells. And I forgot because it's been so long since I've spent any meaningful time in a mall. So the next day I was like, why is my neck all scaly? And why do I feel awful? Like I've been hit by a bus and like my eyes are burning and my throat is sore. And it, it was just a, a big ass allergic reaction from being in the mall and forgetting and not coming home and like washing my hair to get all the scents out. I forgot. So I was knocked pretty flat on Saturday so I lost that day but it's not it's not the biggest setback in the world that would have meant I would have been ahead of where I planned to be as opposed to being behind so that is where we're at thanks for watching through this update thanks for your support uh and thanks for watching